Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we will take a look at how to parse on Mythic Grong as an unholy DK. Now before we actually take a look at the footage, uh, let's look at the talents that I'm using. I'm using a default unholy DK build with Pestilence. I've tried both Pestilence and Epidemic. I'm still not entirely certain which one is better. You can run either one and you will probably see very similar results. As far as trinkets go, I'm using the Mechatork trinket and I'm also using Gronk's Primal Rage. Uh, since on this fight, you can, there are a few points where you can get the trinket off fairly safely. But if you're not comfortable using this trinket, then I would definitely use a passive trinket that just procs. Now for Ezerite traits, I'm running Triple Fester Might, Double Treacherous Covenant, and one Magus of the Dead. Let's roll the footage here. Uh, with our strategy, we bloodlust on pull. So that means I'm going to be using army on pull. If you're bloodlusting at, you know, at the, around the three minute mark, which a lot of guilds tend to do, then make sure to save unholy um, or your army for that. So here we just go in, pop off on the boss, drop my cooldowns. One thing that I don't use here is my death and decay. I'm saving that for the first set of adds. Now the reasoning here. The week before this, we killed those ads at exactly 40 seconds. The first ad died at exactly 40 seconds. The ads spawn at 20 seconds. So that means that if I drop my death and decay on pull, then it would be back up at basically around 35 seconds because you can't just drop it exactly on pull. So if the ads die at 40 seconds and my death and decay is back up at 35, that means I would only get five seconds of death and decay on the ads. So instead of dropping it on the boss, I choose to just hold it and then use it on the ads. Now, as I run over here, um, I use Death's Advance, drop Death and Decay, and then just start cleaving these the best I can. Uh, with our strategy currently, we tend to just nuke down one of the ads very quickly, then leave the other one up for a little bit. If you use the other strategy where you actually kill them fairly equally, that ends up being a lot better for your overall DPS. But even with this, you can make some decent use of your death and decay. One thing that I tend to do is make sure that I refresh my dot on the boss and spend any festering wounds I have on the boss before going over to the next add. So here we get our first tantrum and you can see me AMSing. If you run spell eater um, and you AMS these tantrums, I believe you will mitigate two stacks. And if you run an AMS trait on your Azerite pieces, you will actually mitigate three stacks of tantrum. That's a lot of extra runic power you're getting, as well as preventing a lot of intake uh, damage. So here it's fairly st standard. I just keep hitting the boss. My second set of cooldowns is about to be up. And this is where I will be popping my second potion because there's not really another huge overlap that I can second pot for. And this one is fairly safe. There's not going to be ads coming out. There's not really going to be anything that I can die to pretty easily. So I use my second pot and then just pop off with my second set of cooldowns. And this death and decay, I'm going to be dropping on the boss. Uh, luckily, the boss's hitbox is fairly big and he doesn't move much. So running Pestilence is actually fairly easy to do on this fight. Now for the second tantrum, I didn't have my AMS up. So I just choose to use IBF instead. Uh, depending on how you space out these tantrums, you might or might not be able to AMS for every single one. My guild does them fairly quickly, so my AMS was just barely not up. Um, we have a new set of adds incoming right here. As you can see, I spent all my wounds on the boss, and right now I'm just holding my uh, resources. I want to have some runes up and maybe some runic power, so as soon as the adds are up, I can swap to them and have resources to just start doing damage. So I'm looking for the spawn. As soon as they drop down, um, I dot them up. I drop my death and decay. And right here, I noticed that the dot actually didn't spread to the second ad. Sometimes it will spread to the second ad. Sometimes it won't. Um, I'm not sure. There's a few positions. Um, I believe it's just based on spawn. So make sure to keep an eye on that. Now again here, we just nuke them down as fast as possible. And there I actually ended up having two festering wound stacks on the ad when it died. That is a little suboptimal, but you will still get the damage on the second ad and you will get those fester might stacks. For this third tantrum, again, my AMS was back up. And right here, I'm about to get my third set of cooldowns. So my trinket is five seconds off cooldown and my unholy frenzy is back up. 
Right after that cooldown, we want to kill this boss as fast as possible, because that's the last damage spike that I will be getting. If you look at an Unholy DK's damage, you will peak very high during your cooldowns, and then you will drop into this low value where you do essentially no damage uh, whenever you're out of your cooldowns. So killing the boss as soon as possible after you use a set of cooldowns is very important to getting an overall good rank. And right here, uh, roll the clip. This is my third set of cooldowns. I use this and we want to kill this boss as fast as possible after those cooldowns are over because like I said, this is the last spike of uh, damage that I am getting. Now all my cooldowns are back up, but you saw that I still wasn't using them. I only pop them now. That is because of my Festermite stacks. Uh, usually, if I, especially if you play triple Festermite, it's worth playing around Festermite a little bit. I know I'm not going to get another set of cooldowns anyway, so delaying them 5 to even maybe 10 seconds is not going to be an overall damage loss. So what I want to do is make sure that the Festermite ticks off before I start a new rotation that includes my cooldowns. So right here, I pop everything and just completely pop off on the boss. Do as much damage as possible. And we lost the tank, we lost the DPS, and we lost the healer. This is going to be a messy kill, okay? Um, at this point, we're just burning the boss, trying to kill him as soon as possible before we wipe. Uh, this is a very suboptimal situation, but it ends up working out fairly decently for me. So I have Gronk's Primal Rage back up, which again, I will look at using here. Um, I think before the fight ends, um, I end up using it. I don't know if I noticed that I had it back up, but here I'm fairly certain that we can still kill this boss with one tank, but I'm just looking at the boss uh, switching to me and just using my cooldowns. So right there I use Pr Gronk's Primal Rage. Make sure you keep an eye on your timers with this trinket. Uh, it's very tricky and very easy to just pop this trinket right before a mechanic comes out on you that forces you to move. So right there, we got a 4 tick AMS, or a 4 tick tantrum. And as you can see, I AMS and I actually end up living it because of Spell Eater. And that's with almost, with one healer down and everyone taking insane amount of damage, and actually a lot of people dying to that tantrum. So AMS can make a big difference. Now, I end up being 24.5k on this fight. This was a rank 2, guys. So super messy kill. The boss died at a definitely suboptimal time, but as you can see, as long as you do the fight correctly and you play around the abilities, you drop your death and decays correctly and you get the correct damage on the adds, you can absolutely get a good rank on this fight as long as you play everything um, optimally. If you have any questions about Gronk in particular or you know Unholy DK in general, make sure to let me know in the comment section. And if you want some general pointers for playing on Holy DK, make sure to check out my written guide, which is pinned in my Discord channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.